Hello, friends. In our introductory discussion board post for this course, one of the questions we had to respond to was, what sorts of activities do you enjoy in your free time? Each of us wrote various activities, swimming, yoga, growing tomatoes, spending time with your family and pets, being outdoors, hiking. So my question for you is, when was the last time you did something that you enjoy? If I take it a little bit further, since you started this PhD program, how regularly do you participate in activities you enjoy? It is well documented in our occupational therapy literature by noted authors like Myers, Wilcock, Hildebrand, and Lamb that participating in meaningful occupations, and I would include enjoyable as meaningful, can be beneficial for people's health and well-being. And yet I wonder, how many of us are currently participating in enjoyable occupations? I'm going to spend these next few minutes telling you what occupational balance is, why occupational balance is important for you as a student, and encouraging you to consider how you can impact your personal occupational balance. So what is occupational balance? Occupational balance is the subjective experience of being engaged in the right amount and types of occupations leading to health and a high quality of life. Occupations fit into different categories, activities you want to do or have to do, activities you do for yourself and do for others, activities that drain you or energize you, activities that are physical or restful, activities that are social and activities that are intellectual. All the activities that you participate in make up your occupational balance. Depending on the day, your occupational balance may be comprised of different combinations of activities. Secondly, let me tell you why occupational balance is important for you as a student. I'm guessing we would all be quick to tell our clients and students how important it is for them to maintain their occupational balance. But what about us, especially as we have all taken on an additional role as student? How would you describe your level of occupational balance? Are you engaging in the right amounts and types of occupations that are positively contributing to your health and quality of life? Here's an example of how I participate in occupational activities to promote occupational balance in my own life. On Mondays, I teach for seven hours, 9 a.m. to 12 noon, and then from 1 to 5, all on Zoom. Teaching is an activity I do for others. It is also an activity that drains me because it requires a lot of social energy to keep the same students virtually engaged for long periods of time. Plus, teaching is intellectual for me because I have to stay sharp as I convey difficult concepts in a way that is understandable to my students. I have to answer questions that the students might have, and I need to make sure that I have no technological errors as I flip back and forth between screen sharing videos, PowerPoint slides, Zoom polls, and my Jamboard. Knowing that teaching will take up the majority of my day, and it's an activity that I do for others that drains me and is so intellectual, on Mondays, I start my days with a yoga session. It's an enjoyable activity for myself that energizes me, but settles my mind. And on my short 12 to 1 p.m. break between classes, I leave my computer, check in to see how my boys are doing with virtual schooling, and take a walk around my neighborhood with my husband. Interacting with my boys makes me happy. The walk gets my body moving, and a lighthearted conversation with my husband all refuel me for the second half of my long teaching day. On Monday nights after teaching, if I can help it at all, I don't do any schoolwork, grading, or class prep. This gives my brain a, breast, a rest and f provides me time to focus on my family and time for myself. Sometimes I might even choose to read a book for leisure or go to bed early. Honestly, it's not always easy to give myself permission to take time for myself or to do something that seems leisurely because there's always something pressing to do. However, I think making these intentional choices to participate in enjoyable activities throughout my day 
help reset my occupational balance and enable me to participate in my various roles more effectively. I'm still under the section of telling you why occupational balance is important for you as a student, but let me shift gears here just for a moment. In occupational adaptation class, we've learned that some activities take a lot of primary energy and sometimes we can get stuck. But if we can break set and let our secondary energy kick in for a bit, then perhaps we can get unstuck. I'm wondering as students if we get stuck sometimes. Perhaps when we're writing a paper, plowing through readings, or studying for an exam. In these cases, the just right challenge might not feel just right, but, in so but instead downright hard. Could we break set and get ourselves unstuck by participating in an enjoyable activity? letting our secondary energy take over for a bit. And then, when we return to the hard task, it might not feel so hard. Participating in an enjoyable activity just might help to bring your occupational balance closer into balance in your role as a student. So now to my final point. How might I encourage you to consider your personal occupational balance and discover ways to positively impact your occupational balance? I'm not saying that by having occupational balance, you're shirking your responsibilities. We all signed up for this program and probably need to work and our pets and kids won't feed themselves. These activities are all accounted for in considering occupational balance, but perhaps participating in an enjoyable activity just might also be something you need to do to contribute to your overall sense of well-being. I won't give you any specific suggestions or strategies, like you should go hiking three times per week, take a pet break after one hour of writing, or schedule a block of time in your planner for enjoyable activities, as that wouldn't be consistent with the occupational adaptation theory. But perhaps some of the following questions might help you generate some of your own strategies to try. How might participating in an enjoyable activity be beneficial for you? What have you done in the past to help you incorporate enjoyable activities into your routine? What ideas do you have to help you participate in an enjoyable activity more regularly? Is there anything that you'd be willing to try for a month, week, day, or maybe even once? Over these past few minutes, I've told you what occupational balance is, why occupational balance is important for you as a student, and offered some questions for you to consider related to promoting your own occupational balance and ultimately your personal well-being. Thanks for listening, friends, and let's finish this semester strong.